Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to show you the start, and this is just the start, of my backup power system I'm building and two components that have really helped me put this together. And that is the LNX charge control and that battery monitor right there. Let's check it out. So let me give you some background here on this uh, project. This was a project because, I'll be honest, I had too many parts just lying around. And I figured I wanted to put something together a little bit larger. And I had that Power Queen 100 amp hour um, lithium iron phosphate battery in there. So I wanted to actually use it for something instead of just having it sit on the floor and go to waste. Uh, this will probably be my backup power system for the garage. Um, you know, just a portable one that I can roll around as I need it. If I need lights somewhere or anything like that. Right now, I do not have an inverter in it. This is in its infancy, okay? The wires, cable management still needs to be done inside. Um, I need to put an inverter in it. I'm kind of fluctuating between what I want to do with an inverter. Over here, I have my old 1,000-watt Xantrex inverter, but it's not a pure sine wave. It's a modified sine wave. And since pure sine wave inverters have come down in years, I figured it might be worth it to just wait until I get one and put it in there. For now, we've got 12-volt plugs, USB plugs, and some Anderson power ports set up. Now, we'll get into the two components that I use from Elnex. Um, I've been really impressed with their stuff. Uh, putting it together with this stuff has been super simple. When I used to see these battery monitors, and that's what we're going to cover first here, I was so confused by how they had to be wired up. It looked confusing, all right? They went to, over and above in their, in their manuals to explain how simple this really is to do. Really wasn't all that difficult. I was able to just pop that thing in there with the shunt. Now, I'll show you the shunt when we open up the box. Um, and it makes sense. Now, the only thing I haven't done yet is calibrate the amp hours because I have to run the battery down to zero. Like I said, this is still a work in progress. But this battery monitor is very, very simple to use. It's a 500 amp shunt battery monitor. You got a little 2.4 inch color screen here. 10 feet of shielded wire on the inside. You'll see that too. It supports low voltage program, high voltage program, alarm for eight to a thousand volts. It supports any kind of battery you can think of, a LiPo 4, lithium sealed, gel cell, flooded, whatever you're gonna use. So you don't have to use a lithium iron phosphate battery in here. What I'm trying to do with this project is show you that you can build your own power station affordably and not break the bank. Without that battery, if I were to just put a regular acid, lead acid battery in there, I'd probably be into this project for well, maybe a hundred bucks, 150. Now, the rigid container I had, this was a rigid uh, toolbox on wheels. I kind of lucked out with that, but I believe they run about 35 40 bucks at Home Depot. Anyway, I really like the monitor. It really works well. It's color. It's bright. You can adjust the brightness. If you want to go into the menus, and I will show you how, how to set the, uh, the uh, stuff on it. If you want to go into the menus, let me move the camera a little closer and show you how that works. All right, so what we're going to do first is hold the OK button here down for three seconds. One, two, three. And there's your battery value. And that's what I was working on. This is a 100 amp hour battery in there. And what you're going to do is push again down to get into it. Oops, sorry. Push again to get into it. And you're going to set your 100 amp hours. All right. Now, when I do that, it'll go to zero because I haven't programmed this. I haven't run the battery out and put it at zero yet. It has to go to zero the first time. So you do have to deep discharge your battery one time to do it. Anyway, let's move out of there. That's number one. Number three is, that's number two, I'm sorry. Number one is set current clear. So you can clear all your stuff on here. If I want to do that, and just press the up key to clear it. Let's move to the next menu. That's two. We did that. Okay. This is your color value. Okay. That's your LED value for brightness. So let's say I want to make this dimmer or brighter. I have it at about a four. Um, this does not time out. So you will have to... Keep an eye on it if your battery is very low. All right, let's get out of there. We're moving to I keep going the wrong way. Moving to five. Okay, this will set the rest for the battery screen. This sets your STI values for one to five amps. Back color. So you can do this black and white, or you can do this in color. I'm keeping it in color. Black and white was a little bit harder to see outside. And this is your LED breathe. What this will do is show you, and it will give an alarm, and it will blink and show you when you're very, very low. Now, I have it off right now. I haven't bothered with it. Let's see what happens if I turn it on because I haven't really messed with it. Okay, there we go. And we keep going down. Oh, going the wrong way again. And there's your PAI value. Okay. 
your LPV value. And that's it. You're pretty much done. Very, very simple to set up. Um, again, you're going to need to, let me hold this, one, two, three. So you're going to need to calibrate this before you get it in there. And I haven't done that yet. That's why it shows 0, 0.0 amp hours. When that's done, when it's calibrated, it will be 100% and it will show the amp hours. Now, this did read it as a lithium iron phosphate battery. So that's good, too. And uh, we have that all set up in there. Battery voltage, again, 13.3 volts. No amps being pulled. No watts being pulled. And the timer is running right there. Now, I do have this over here on this side. Let's see if it matches. You can kind of see it off the corner. 13.3, 13.3, dead on. So, very, very cool. Let me put this on the ground and show you. I'm, I'm going to be very careful with it because it's just placed there. I have to drill it into the box. Show you what the shunt looks like and how simple it is to hook up. All right, so you're looking down into the hodgepodge of wires here. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't done cable management on this or anything yet. I do have to mount this shunt. I'm probably going to be mounting it on this side here. Let me pull it up for you and take a look. And there you go. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to run off the positive into the positive terminal on this one and the negative on the negative. I do need a ring terminal for that. I'm going to get that. Um, and that's the shunt right there. That will allow you to take that and run that from that into your battery monitor. The white cable on the bottom there, that runs into, pardon the mess here, the back of the battery monitor right there. So next up, we're going to cover the charge controller. I do have this currently inside here. And I have this connected to, let me back you up a little bit and show you. Here we go. I have it connected to just a 100-watt uh, solar panel. Nothing all that grand. I haven't put it in perfect sun. It's just doing its job sitting there. And that's the charge controller. Now, what I like about the charge controller is it's got many different ways to see what's going on. Now, I don't know if you can see it. You can probably see it on camera. Um, there's a blue light here. Where am I looking at? There we go. There's a blue light there. Get my finger out of the way blue light there that shows when it's charging it shows the solar panel um the red on the solar panel the light and up on the display you'll also see a small little solar panel sorry for having this in here like this but i already installed it and i can't take it out <laughs> but as you can tell if i push this button here i'm going to get my amps so i'm getting 4.1 amps off that panel at the moment push it again getting my amp hours that i put into my battery so far and it's 0.3 it's only been out here for a minute and back to 13.5 for charging this up. I am going to let this charge up today. I'm just going to leave this panel out here and let this top off. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's a very, very handy charge controller. I want to give you some specs on it. So let me kind of put the camera down here for a second and be able to tell you a little more information on this and the power monitor. All right. So quickly about the charge controller. I show you there going up in, going up in uh, amps and bolts and everything. Um, this is waterproof. Okay, you can spray this down with water. The connections are protected on the bottom. The inside back here, there's a backing that mounts to this, okay? And the inside back here is completely covered in a very thick rubberized kind of plastic that um, it's almost like a rubber coating of some kind that will protect it from um, getting wet in any way, shape, or form. So it is waterproof. You can't dunk it underwater, of course, but it is waterproof. This will capture 15 to 30% more of the performance of the panel. It is, again, IP65 waterproof design, so it is suitable for outdoor use. This does have five-stage PWM technology, so it's got a high charging efficiency. It, it provides five charging stages. Now, when you first connect this to the battery, it's going to decide what kind of battery you have. Along the bottom here, I don't know if you can see it, but it will say what kind of battery you're using. You can't see it now because I have it in charge control mode. It's running, but it will tell you what kind of battery you're using. It will sense it from the battery, and it will run through there, and it, of course, here, settle for... Uh, LifePo 4 battery. So you have five stages of this. Right now it's in the uh, bulk charging. It starts in soft start, bulk, and absorption, float, and equalization. So it will take care of your battery. It will also automatically equalize the battery every 28 days for calcium if you're using a lead acid battery. Of course, for a lithium iron phosphate, that's not necessary. You do have a nice visual solar monitor there. You do have the backlit LED, which just, if you, if you want to turn that on, you'll just hit that button there to turn it on. You do have all the information like I showed you before, the current voltage, the current amps that are being put into the battery, and the amp hours that you put in over time. Now this is a 10 amp charge controller. It can automatically detect 12 volt or 24 volt systems, and it works with multiple batteries, including LiPo4, LTO, gel, AGM, lead acid, calcium, EFB batteries as well. 
Great for deep cycle starter and marine batteries. So anything like that, really, really simple. What I want you to notice here is how thin this thing is. I mean, this thing is just, I mean, you can see there's hardly anything to it. And it was nice because I was able to squeeze it in here. I'll give you a better look at it. Squeeze it in here and really get a good little uh, spot in there. And I have the stuff coming in at the mount on the solar. Let me show you the side here. It's just a uh, Anderson power port. I'm going to clean that up a little bit into that. And it really works well. And it runs right into the battery. You don't have to put it through the bus bars. I have bus bars in here. Again, they're taped up. They're going to be permanently done when I have everything connected. But all in all, I'm really pleased with the two pieces that I've used from Elnex for their um, for their uh, equipment. Now, you will notice I figured a way to shut this off. So I have 60 seconds and it will automatically shut off. When you turn it on, let me show you that really quick. It will come on very slowly. See? And then it goes up to the correct brightness. But all in all, I'm really pleased with the gear. Um, I was looking for something not super expensive, yet a lot of information. I like the battery monitor. Once I calibrate the amp hours, it'll be a lot better. But I like the battery monitor. Um, I like the fact that I can use that and not have to worry about um, how much my battery is left, what my voltage is, anything like that. At any time, I can see it very, very easily. And I really love the charge control. Charge control is just really unique, small, easy to use. Again, this isn't going to be a waterproof unit by any means, but it is going to allow me to have something like this running and uh, running out here when I need it and not constantly being run off wall power for anything I need if I need to move this around. And we will, once this is done, we're going to be doing testing on it and everything once I get an inverter figured out for it. But again, this is really just a start. And these two items have really made my job a lot easier. Uh, the charge controller was perfect. I have a bunch of charge controllers, but they're too big or they're not the type that I would use for this. This can handle up to 10 amps, so I could probably put a couple of panels on this and not have to worry about it at all. So all in all, very pleased with it. Now, the battery monitor, a little more expensive than the charge controller. It's $63.99. does come with the shunt and very, very good instructions. I don't have the instructions down here on the floor, but very, very simple to read and understand how to use. I was really confused by them at first because they had loops that you had to put in, tie things around and... You know, like an amp meter where you put around a, a cable coming in, the power coming in. So I was kind of confused by them at first. <laughs> this one makes it very, very simple. So charge controller, awesome, awesome little item. And it seems to be working very, very well. I was a little nervous last night because I put the panel out. And I put it under my studio lights to see if it was bright enough and I wasn't getting anything in. But it does require at least three volts to start the charge controller going. So know that if you're in extremely low, low light conditions... That won't work. You need at least three volts. Anyway, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, the links for these guys, the battery monitor and the charge controller will be down below in the description. Charge controller is $39.99. Battery monitor is $63.99. And I really can't wait to get moving more on this project. Um, I think this is going to be fun for use in the channel as well as other things. Again, this is more of a home unit. This wouldn't be something I'd take camping with me because obviously it's big. But definitely a cool little fun project to get going. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Links will be down below. Don't forget to check all our links down below as well as our freeze-dried wholesalers, our Amazon store. Uh, freeze-dried wholesale link will save you 15% just by clicking it. So if you're interested in getting stocked up on some food for emergency preparedness, you can save 15% just by using my link. We have our My Patriot Supply link down there, which is preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. And that has $250 off a three-month kit for your freeze-dried food storage definitely a good deal we also have deals on the three-week the, the four-week kit and a bunch of other gear on there so check them out anyway folks thank you for watching stay safe and stay prepared